Greetings. This is Preacher Rick. We are now in the book of Romans, the epistles, the third section of the New Testament. Third category, the epistles. The epistle of St. Paul, the Apostle Paul to the Roman church. Epistles are, is another word for letters. Letters that God, through the Holy Spirit, directed most of them from Paul, but not all of them, uh, from Paul and different apostles, either to one another or to the church. This is to the church at Rome. Now, think about the church at Rome. We all know about the Romans. We know how rough they were and how mean they were. And the gladiators and all that kind of stuff. They also killed many Christians, crucified many Christians. And it was really a, a terrible thing. So to have a church established there in Rome was a big deal. And here is a letter to them. Okay, we're going to go to the... Um, I always pray, and God always gives us exactly what he wants us to preach for that little 10-minute sermon each day as we go through the Bible. And now we look here in the 8th chapter of the book of Romans, uh, some beloved scripture. Uh, in verse 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who can do it? Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? What can do it? Who can do it? Tribulation, troubles. Can, can trouble separate us from his love or distress, which is uh, difficult situations? We all have them. Or persecution uh, when you're treated bad for taking a stand for him, maybe even killed. Or famine. We all know what famine is when the weather doesn't give us the, what we need to grow produce and go hungry. Or nakedness. Uh, just don't have anything. Or peril which is physical or spiritual dangers. And what, we're seeing that today, aren't we? Perils or sword. Shall any of these things separate us from the love of Christ? Thank God forever. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Uh, in verse 37, it says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors uh, through him that loved us. Thank God we not only have conquered our sins, but we have inherited eternal life. Glory to God. Oh, grave, where is thy death? Where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? Thank God forever. I'll never, and none of us Christians will ever see a grave. We'll never be in one. Oh, this old flesh may, but I won't. Not the one talking to you won't. Our soul will be cradled in the arms of Jesus. Thank God. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, the Bible says. For I am persuaded, the Apostle Paul told the Roman church, I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor debt. Think of that. He's including everything. Nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, aren't you glad to be cradled in the arms of Jesus and to know his love and his goodness in your life? You know, I've said many times in these sermons, it was the goodness of God that led me to repentance. You have to get your eyes off people, totally off people. People will bring you down, including yourself. I even look in the mirror and I can bring myself down because people will let you down. But I'll tell you who will never let you down, Jesus. He will never fail you. Get your eyes off people. And once you fix them on the, his cross and on him, you'll never be let down. Thank God forever. So many people start looking at people's failures and quit going to church or start blaming them and quit serving God. And that's such a big mistake. You ought to know that from the very time you, you get saved. That you can't depend on people. You can't even depend on yourself to get to heaven, let alone other people. So... The apostle said, none of these things can separate us from the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. I say glory. Hallelujah. As you turn on over in Romans, we'll read a few more verses before we preach a little bit. In the 10th chapter, uh, I want to read a few verses. Thank God for ever starting at verse 8. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Thank God forever that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I say glory to God.
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And it says, For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Have you called upon him? Have you called upon him? If you are, you're rich. If you've called upon him and sincere in your heart, and you ask him to save you, you're rich, thank God forever. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, thank God. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? <laughs> now think about that. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Now listen to this. And that's why God calls men like me. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? I know I've been sent to preach these messages. I know I have it. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. We all kid about that, how beautiful our feet are. But it's talking about that because of where they walk to and how they bring that sermon out. Uh, how that they have carried the word of God to you and bring glad tidings of good things. Glad tidings. Thank God. Peace. Thank God that passeth understanding. Joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. Uh, thank God. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. How sad that is. For Elias uh, saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Why aren't, don't people believe us? We try, Down through the Old Testament, the old prophets, they all told them, and they didn't believe them. But it came to pass just like God told them through the prophet, and it's going to come to pass just like God tells you and tells us through the preachers today that I have the Holy Ghost, those that are filled with the Spirit of God, those that have been called, anointed of God, preach His unsearchable riches, thank God for it. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, uh, thank God forever. Uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, it says, But I say, have they not heard? Yes, barely. Their sound went unto all the earth, and their words uh, unto the ends of the world. Uh, uh, thank God forever. Uh, uh, listen, uh, and it's here today, the Word of God. Uh, and it's the Word of God I just read to you. What can separate us from the love of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, why wouldn't we want His love? Uh, uh, the tender shepherd, the good shepherd, uh, thank God that leads His sheep uh, beside the still water. Waters. I thank God and gives us a, a peace uh, that I've already said that passeth understanding. Uh, the Bible says that it's joy unspeakable uh, and full of glory. Uh, I've never been able to find the words uh, uh, that I really feel in my heart. Uh, and the only words I can preach are what the Bible says. Uh, uh, the B-I-B-L-E. Uh, yes, that's the book for me. Uh, I stand upon the Word of God. Uh, the B-I-B-L-E. Uh, I thank God forever for Jesus. Jesus, uh, and thank God for his love. Uh, it's no wonder the old song Amazing Grace means so much to us Christians. Uh, amazing Grace, how sweet the sound uh, that saved a wretch like me. Uh, I once was lost, uh, but now I'm found. Uh, thank God was blind, uh, but now I see. Uh, thank God I see the goodness of God, and I've been led to repentance. Uh, I've been born again, washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, why uh, uh, should I worry about the perils of this life as we read. Uh, uh, shall that separate me from God? Uh, we've been made more than conquerors. Uh, uh, thank God. Uh, uh, we are in, we have inherited an eternal life uh, and by the grace of God, the amazing grace that we sing about so often, uh, by His grace we'll make it even if we have all kinds of thorns in the flesh. Uh, the old apostle that wrote this epistle that God used, uh, he had a thorn in the flesh. I don't know what it was. No man knows for sure. He might have been going half blind or so. Someone offered and said if he could have, they'd give him his eyes. Uh, listen, uh, I don't know what it was. As many times as he was stoned, and I'm, I'm getting older, I know what arthritis is. Maybe he had arthritis so bad he couldn't hardly walk. Only God knows. Uh, but whatever that thorn in the flesh was, whether it was something of that nature or something else, uh, he sought God. He asked God three times to remove it. And God said, no, Paul. No, he didn't use the word no, and I'm paraphrasing. Uh, but he said, no, uh, my grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, and I found that to be true in every area of life, uh, that the grace, which is unmerited love, uh, uh, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is all we need and nothing, uh, uh, nothing in this world. There's nothing high enough, low enough, wide enough. Uh, uh, there's no principalities. Uh, there's no devils this side of hell uh, that can separate me uh, or you from the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but if you don't 
have that love in your heart. Uh, it's there for you. Uh, Jesus loves you. From the time you was little, you heard the song. Maybe you used to sing it. Uh, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. Uh, uh, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. Uh, they are weak, but he is strong. Uh, maybe you still sing it. Uh, and your little ones, maybe you teach that to them. Uh, let me tell you, uh, he does love you. From the time we were little, we knew it. And, you know, he loved, he loves people. He loved them when he was walking in his earthly ministry, uh, uh, but they hated him. Uh, I don't understand how anyone could want to turn aside uh, uh, from a, such a wonderful, loving Savior. Uh, why would you want to turn him down when you, you seek the answers of this life and you can't find him? You won't find the answers in this world. Uh, you won't find it in money. You won't find it in good health. Uh, even if you stay away from this virus, you won't find the answers to life uh, in good health money, youth. You won't find it in a good job. You won't find it in a nice home. You won't find it with a wonderful spouse. Uh, you won't find it with children, with your parents, your grandparents, uh, uh, your nieces, your nephews. Uh, you won't find the answers anywhere uh, except at the foot of the cross uh, where Jesus' precious blood ran. Uh, thank God. And that's the only way you're going to conquer uh, uh, the sins of this world. Uh, that's the only way you're going to conquer death and hell uh, is by the grace of God. We're saved by grace through faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And as I already told you, read Hebrews 11. 1. I think in another one of these short sermons, it tells you what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I see, thank God, this world, and I don't see God by His face. But I see Him in nature, and I see Him in His children. Children, and I see him everywhere in his goodness, uh, but I feel him in his presence, just like I feel the wind. Uh, thank God, uh, uh, and I have faith. Uh, thank God, it's the substance of things hoped for, uh, and it's the evidence of things not seen, just like the evidence of a tree blowing in the wind, uh, that the wind is there, even though I can't see it. Uh, uh, the evidence of the Holy Spirit, uh, thank God, gets me through the perils of this life and the distresses we read about. What can it can't separate you from that presence? Precious love. Jesus loves you. He loves all of us. Thank God. And I'm so glad to report to all you Christians that there ain't no virus. There ain't no peril, no distress. There's nothing in this world that can ever separate us from the love that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. These are precious words. Read them. Hide them in your heart like David of old did. Hid the word of God in his heart that he wouldn't sin against God. I don't want to sin against my maker. I want to praise Him, glorify Him, lift up my hands. Christians, once again, lift up your hand and look above. Your redemption draweth nigh. Christians, keep up the good work. Don't get down. Don't let the devil destroy what God built in your life. He loves you. Come to you in Jesus' name. This is Preacher Rick. We love you all. God bless you till tomorrow.